All right, bring it up. Let's get going. Well, what we're trying to do is, is get them ready to be an NBA player. So, so there's a lot that goes into this pre-draft process. They'll come here to Proactive and get some PT work done. Everyone's different what they need. A typical day, what they'll do, they'll come in and they'll do their pre-court activation. And, and again, that's different for each guy. They'll get their ankles loosened up and they get some blood flow in their legs. And then just, you know, do some neuro prep to get them ready to fire on the court. So when they step on that court with Don, he's not messing around. So we need to get them ready for that. The thing I'm thinking about is like you guys, most of you or a few of you have had a workout now and you see what it takes to be really good, okay? He thought he did better than he did. So obviously we have to be so high at a level that like even if it's not as good as maybe we thought, it's still better than everyone else, okay? We got two days, three days, today, tomorrow, Saturday, and we need to get, get right on this live stuff. You're just starting out. So give me what you got. We got some things to talk about, but let's rip through our drills, be sharp with that, and then we'll get into our live and we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We're on the baseline, handle pass back, let's go. They're on the court. Some days we're an hour 20, some days we're two hours on the court. And then they come back to proactive to either lift, do a core mobility day. We're not trying to make these guys weightlifters, we're trying to make them better basketball players. So that's where the coordination comes into play is, is, is understanding there's that spectrum and, and how do you really manipulate the time you have with these guys to make it efficient for each athlete. Catch cross between the legs, behind the back, behind the back, bounce it between the legs, bounce it, switch it, bounce it, throw it back. I think one, one of the funnest parts of what I do for pre-draft is figuring out players, what they're good at, what they need to add to their game, what we need to take out, what does their shot look like, do we need to tweak it, that's the one disadvantage I have is I only have five, six, seven weeks to try and fix some of this stuff. So I have to decide what's worth trying to fix in that short window of time or what I'm trying to add in that short window of time. I can see you're thinking about mixing it up, but if you catch quick, pivot quick, that's got to set something up. Like you did it, and I think if you had done something off of it, you would have gotten free, but you came back to square, it's like you didn't even do it. You know what I'm saying? What people don't realize is, is in the draft process, what matters. So many people come up to me and say, you know, well, he only averaged nine points a game. How did he go in the first round? Well, it's because he's 6'9 with a 7'2 wingspan and has a 37 and a half inch vertical. That's why. And so the measurables of this matter, but in terms of skill, you know, the NBA is played at a different speed than the college game. It's way more physical. And so what I, what I spend a lot of time on is getting them to start thinking like an NBA player with NBA rules. You have, there's too many jumpers. I know you're trying to drive, but every time you try and drive, he's cutting you off and then you're retreating. You gotta, you gotta hit him first and make him, knock him off, and then you can decide what you're doing. It has to be that way. It's not like this is an off-season workout where I'm trying to get them better at their left hand or trying to get them shooting them. No, I'm trying to get you better for team workouts to get drafted higher, period. Level needs to go up a notch. Come on. Guys from all sports that we work with, you know, people like Aaron Rodgers from football or Christian Yelich in baseball, all these like stars, they have that element of the ability to zone in and say, okay, what, if it's 2% that I get better next year, how do we focus and do that? I think everybody has God-given talent. There's different genetic ceilings and it's our job to get these guys to their ceiling as fast as possible and to keep them healthy. Yeah, yeah, KZ, yes. You get one chance at this. There's no do-over for the NBA draft. If you buy in and do you know, what we're asking you to do, and you go higher, great. But if you don't, and you go lower than you thought you were gonna go, you don't get to re-enter the draft. I have that June 20th date hanging over their head the entire time. They know it's there. These players will never work out like this again because they don't need to. Drive, 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 drive. <laughs> I ask so much of these players. Casey Akpal has been here since April 1. I challenge these guys daily. We go six days a week. So think about that. They'll be here till June. It's a long time. Six days a week with me in their ear. Like I know it ain't college anymore, man. You can drop shoulders. It's physical, way more physical than it was in college. Let's go. So I ask a lot because 
it's for them. You know, I sit on draft night almost like a parent, like a nervous parent, hoping that they go where I think they could have gone. And I think that's because my expectation is, is that I can do it. And if these guys give me everything they have, they're gonna probably get what they want. There we go, good, good. It's different. I think that's the main thing, it's different. Uh, it's uncomfortable at, at points, but I think it's just a, a learning experience and it really uh, uh, promotes growth uh, for an individual like me. He knows your hands there, but he's not having to react to it. Make him react by getting after it, okay? What he demands of you uh, day in and day out, uh, he's on me 24-7, and I think it's just been great for me. Come on. Find your target, knock it down. With KZ, I saw him play a lot at Stanford the last couple of years, and you said the, the length is off the charts, and that's what gets NBA teams excited about him. And I think you start with him being a, a really, really good 3 and D guy. Because of that length, you teach him how to guard people. And then can he make a consistent three-point shot? You start with that. KZ, change the speed you had him the first time. I'm glad that you made the second one, but the first one was the shot. Adam fast, stop. He's retreating, pull it. My goal for him is obviously the first round. I think he's a first rounder all day. But he's made significant strides here in his approach to the game mentally, in his speed at which he plays at. One thing that, that I didn't really see at Stanford that's, that's off the charts for a guy his size, not, not pretty good off the charts, is his handle. He really, really handles the ball, and I think that's going to help him a lot. That's better. It's crazy because now when I'm watching them be, I'm like, man, I have to be guarding that, or man, uh, I'm going to be take, I'm gonna have to take that shot, and I think I'm ready for it. Good. Keep him off so that you can still get to your feet and then your length. That was perfect defense right there. What's fun for me is that they appreciate that what I did, what Ryan did, what this whole process did for them and getting them drafted higher. And you know, and, and what I try to create, which really helps me, but helps everybody, is kind of this, this thought that, yes, you are all individually on your own come draft night, but let's do it together every day and make each other better because in on draft night individually we'll get what we get and so the relationships here stay i feel like again like i'm a parent sending them off to like their new college which is the nba we have to continue to evolve individually offensively within this the one-on-one -on -one and the two-on-two -on -two. but that was really good today we're coming back doing the same thing tomorrow